All right, welcome everyone. Uh, this will be the first of this kind of video that I've ever done. We're gonna look at some Fusion 360. Now, I'm gonna show you how to make one of these guys. This is a partially completed two by two Rubik's Cube. Um, I saw a video on the YouTubes of a guy who did exactly this project, and this is kind of a ripoff because that's where I got the idea. So here's his video. Um, now, uh, my tech fun, you're a legend. I'm not trying to diss you here. Um, you've put a lot of thought into this design and I've ripped it off wholesale. <laughs> um, actually, your design is probably better because uh, I can see that you have taken a little bit of a radius off of these corners here. I don't know how you did that or, or if that improves it in any way. Uh, my one has a lot less features than yours. You can see his timeline goes way off the edge of the uh, off the edge of the Fusion 360 window here. Um, so this was the inspiration. It's the exact design. I even used uh, the same idea that he's used to create custom supports when printing the blocks, as you will see. So uh, all credit to my tech fun, you're a legend and it's a great idea for a project. But if you are gonna do this in Fusion 360, I do have some tips. I will show you how to do this in just one sketch, the whole cube, all the features from one sketch. Let's give it a go. I will skip back to the beginning and we will have a look at what I did to accomplish this. So let's start with a blank file. Here we go and get straight into it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do to make my life easy is we're just going to go uh, create ourselves some custom user parameters. So we're going to make the cube 60 millimeters square. We need some basic uh, dimensions. You'll, these will make more sense in a second. Outer sphere offset. Uh, that's going to be about four millimeters. Uh, we're going to need the leg radius. Um, uh, let's go for five in this design. We're going to create the foot height, four millimeters in this design. Uh, foot length, that will also be four millimeters. Leg length, leg length and that will be four millimeters again we'll be able to adjust all of this uh, we're going to put in a parameter for clearance and we're going to set that to 0 0.2 millimeters and finally uh, we're just going to do one for convenience in a sphere radius and that's gonna be the cube dimension divided by two. Uh, subtract the sphere offset, subtract the leg length, subtract the foot height. Okay, I think that's most of the parameters we need to make this work. So I'll close this window now, and as promised, create the one and only sketch that we require to make this Rubik's Cube. So we'll start with a square, which we will make the cube size like so. Uh, I will use the equal constraint so that I don't have to do both sides. I'm going to snap to the midpoint, see the little triangle there, and create just a cross over that. There we go. And we're gonna use the midpoint constraint onto one of these lines onto our global origin. There we go, that snaps us into position. Now we're going to create the what I call the outer sphere and I'm going to dimension that by selecting the line there, right clicking and telling it to pick the arc tangent of the circle and we will call this the sphere, outer sphere offset. There we go. Uh, and then we will create two more circles like so and we will dimension these one of them will dimension between the two, that is the leg length. And this one here will be the foot height. All right, just sorted out some audio issues. Apologies for the beginning of the video. 
Right, so I've selected the line tool here and we're just going to draw two lines going down like this, making sure that the perpendicular constraint happens. And then we're going to dimension the leg radius like so. And then the leg, uh, sorry, the foot length like so. And enter. There is going to be a screw that holds this together. So we're just going to draw the profile of the hole that we need for that. Uh, let's see the tip of the screw. Uh, let's say uh, two millimeters from the outside of the inner sphere. I know that a good size for my screw is 2.9 millimeters and it's the radius. So we divide by two. I know that the outside of the screw needs 6.5 millimeters divided by two, and most screws, hopefully, it will be 45 degrees exactly. Yes, and I think we'll have at least four millimeters of material for the screw to grip onto. That's the screw done. Uh, we will also need a pin. I'll get the rectangle tool, there we go. Uh, we will have to create a point on the rectangle like that and use the coincident constraint because the point is constrained to the midpoint of this line. Now we will constrain that point to this line. Now our uh, thing is in the right spot and we're going to dimension from here to here and that is going to be the inner sphere radius which we calculated earlier divided by 2. Uh, and I'm going to use a metal pin, which uh, I don't know the millimeter measurement for it. I know that it is one inch uh, divided by eight, one eighth of an inch. And I'm just going to add 0 0.15 millimeters to that. Ah, uh, we need the radius. We'll divide that by two. There we go. Uh, and we will put a length of eight millimeters there. Yeah, that, that really is it. That's the one sketch that we need to draw an entire 2x2 two two Rubik's Cube. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is actually create the cube. So to do that, we're going to select the Extrude tool, and we have to go through a bit of rigmarole because we do need to extrude this quadrant in particular. Okay, and the distance will be cube divided by 2. Now we're going to go back in here and turn the sketch back on. There we go. Now we're going to do a revolve and we're going to select all of that again like so. We're going to tell it to use the horizontal midpoint axis to cut out this, uh, the inner sphere, the outer sphere from the cube like so. Uh, do another revolve to create the first leg. So we'll do this axis uh, and we, we want just 90 degrees this time. There we go. So there's our little leg right away. Uh, now we're going to use a neat little trick where we construct a line, an axis between two points. There we go. And we're going to select the origin point like so, and the tip of the cube just there like so, so that we get this uh, construction line going through the cube. Click OK. That's perfect. We're going to do a circular pattern not faces, definitely select features, and we're going to select that particular revolve which created the leg, and we're going to select this axis here, and by default it's done three uh, full rotation, so there we go, they're spaced out just exactly perfectly already, and done. So we're going to get rid of that uh, cube for now and go back to our original sketch. What we're going to do is to do some more revolves. So we're going to revolve with the correct thing selected and we're going to use a little bit of a trick. We're actually going to revolve the entire thing full rotation based on the horizontal axis just to create a sphere. In a separate step another revolve but this time we're just going to select the cutout and we're going to do the horizontal axis again. Okay. We can do the exact same thing we did with the leg. We can select that revolve feature and select that axis. Uh, quantity is set to 3. Click OK. 
and lo and behold, all the grooves are cut for the whole sphere. Uh, now, the, there's something interesting about these grooves. Obviously, it's not symmetrical. Um, each of these quadrants is actually a little bit different because of the way that the grooves do or don't cut a ledge underneath there. And you can see this quadrant here actually has no grooves cut in it. And that is the quadrant that will become the fixed cube. And that should be the cube that is the opposite cube to the the first cube that we made. Um, so we're going to hide that again, go back to our sketch, and then we're going to extrude, and we're going to select that profile, that profile, that profile, that profile, extrude it by cube over two, uh, and that looks like it's going the wrong way. So we'll go negative, and we don't want to cut, we want to join. So we get the quadrant that had none of the overhangs becomes this cubey. So we're going to do another revolve. We're going to cut away, we're going to do a full rotation on that axis because we need to cut an overhang just here. That overhang is necessary for the cube foot to be able to turn all the way around. And we need three of those and we can do our same trick yet again. We can select features, the last revolve we did, that axis three times and now all three of those three where the where that needs to happen uh, it can now happen obviously it's not required here because there's no way for the cubes to actually rotate around the fixed cubes edges uh, the next thing we need to do is select the entire thing and click the offset button here it is and we will offset by negative clearance there it is. So all the faces will move in just a little bit. The only ones we don't want to do are the outside faces of the cube, like so. Click OK. There we go. The next step is to cut our screw hole. I'll just select the whole thing and do the axis. Yeah, it's important that we cut the screw hole after we do the offset, otherwise our dimensions for the hole would have been wrong. We need to cut the hole for the pin that stops everything from rotating on the cut line undesirably. Yep, the next thing, which is to split the entire body using this particular face here, the one that's you know uh, in plane with the screw hole. So we'll cut that, and we can see now that if we hide one side, we've got a pin hole just to stop it rotating. We got our screw hole. That's what we need. And now we can see the little offset that we introduced just there. That should be enough uh, in order for the whole thing to work nicely. I think I have found the offending problem, uh, the offending edge. It is that one there. If I select it, it won't do it. There's an error. If I deselect it, hey, we get some chamfers. So I'm just going to deselect all the edges like that, and it's obviously to do with the extreme angles that we've got going here. Uh, now, we better do pretty much the same thing and have a look at our long neglected cube. This needs a bit of work, so we pretty much want to do all the edges. Hey, let's just, uh, we'll do our same trick. We'll go select, selection f priority, edge priority. Yeah, there we go. Okay, all right, so, Basically, we just don't want to do the outside. Uh, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. I like it. I like it. And I just want to add one more feature to make things look a bit nice uh, on these outside edges. That are super sharp. We'll give a two millimeter round off like that. And that's it. That's done. Let's have a look at what our clearances look like with the section tool. We can drag this back. Oh yeah, 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 there you go. That's what we're looking at there. That's what I'm looking for. That looks pretty good. If I look up like this. Haha, -ha, that's the correct clearance. <laughs> uh, this is pretty much ready to print, but it's not because I did kind of lie to you. I have to come clean. We have to do some more sketches in order to make this 
printable. Um, so let's do those now. There are two custom supports that I highly recommend that you do. Uh, we could just take this into the slicer now and that would be fine, but <clears throat> custom supports are going to save you a lot of headaches. So here we go. Okay, so we've got to put a sketch here. Such clickbait, I know, I'm, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. We're going to click on that face to project it down here. Click OK to finish the projection. We're going to offset that boundary by, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, uh, negative two millimeters like so. We are going to extrude that by yeah, 0 0.4. And then we will do another extrusion uh, based on that profile. And this time we will select uh, to an object, yep. And we'll select that object. We want to join, but we don't want to join it to the cube. We only want to join it to this little skirt. So the way that I figured works is you just hide, uh, hide the cube temporarily. There we go. Now it won't join to the cube. You see, and we want to do an offset of minus 0.15. Uh, no, sorry, 0.15 down. There we go. We click OK can bring our cube back and you can see there's a teeny tiny gap in there and that is like less than what a layer would be so this will only partially connect to this we don't have to worry about whether it physically touches or not because in reality the filament will droop down and stick to this without any problems last one I promise we're gonna do another sketch uh, this time we are gonna put it here and we're going to do a projection and we're going to select these profiles here like that and we're going to do much the same thing we're going to offset uh, we have to click it for each profile unfortunately we can't do them all at the same time negative two okay and select all of these profiles and we will select two object and select that face. There we go. We want to join, but we don't want to join it to that body, so we hide it and click OK. And then I'm going to click Shell. Uh, and this is just a minor optimization. We're just going to select all these faces and we're going to put uh, 0 0.7. And hopefully what that will do is just stop the slicer from messing around with uh, infill. We just want a single perimeter, basically. So that's it. We're, we're actually done. We are ready to print. So the way I have exported this to the slicer in the past is to select the bodies that go together and export it in parts. So we can uh, go away. There we go. And then you would uh, right click on the top here, save as STL. And I have it configured to go straight to Prusa Slicer, which you can look up how to do. Uh, click OK. Alrighty, so with the part now in Prusa Slicer, it's a pretty straightforward procedure that you're probably familiar with. You select the part, select the part orientation tool. There's no actual separation here. Uh, between the actual part and the custom supports. I just intend to cut them off after we're done. It's not that hard to do with a, a knife if you're careful and a pair of uh, side cutters such as these. Uh, so uh, this is basically what we end up with. So this is why we did the shell. Uh, we didn't want any fill material inside these custom supports. They're just a single perimeter which will make them easy to cut off. There's a very small area here where it has to do bridging, uh, which a uh, printer should manage that amount of bridging with no issues. Uh, let's move on to the little cubie. Alrighty, so here's our little cube. Uh, we'll just go slice now and we'll end up with that. Uh, I've just been leaving this as solid rather than shelling it out just for some extra stiffness uh, because this does need to support quite a lot of the leg all the way up to here here before it joins so having this nice and stiff really helps you to print that and make that bridge uh, and then the rest of the structure will support it uh, so that's basically it I'll quickly go through the print settings uh, we're using a 0.2 millimeter layer height 15% rectilinear infill 
uh, filament, just standard PLA, you have to tune it for your own material and a 0.6 millimeter nozzle size, and I've had no problems so far. Alrighty, well, thank you all very much for watching, really appreciate it. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe and all of that business. I will occasionally see you with another video sometime soon, I don't know. <laughs> you guys have a good one. Bye. I'll leave you with some footage of me doodling around with the printed parts. I still haven't finished it, I've got one more cube to print. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get the screwdriver in at the end. Uh, that's a good reason to go back and watch the original video by My Tech Fun. I'll put a link in the description. He goes through a lot of details like how to fit a screwdriver in at the end, and uh, a few other tips and tricks for getting the 3D prints to come out right. So I highly recommend that you also watch his video. Thank you all very much, and I shall see you next time.